Hello everyone, my name is Wan Lingao from Institute of Computing Technology, Chinese Academy of Science. I'm very honored to have the opportunity to give the presentation, and my topic is AI Bench Scenario, Scenario Distilling AI Benchmarking. First, many thanks for the invitation of Prof. Chen, and many thanks for the workshop organizers. Nowadays, AI has been one of the most important workloads and has been applied to various domains like data center, supercomputing, edge computing, and Internet of Things. Benchmarks are the foundation of measurements and uh, optimization. However, there has no uniform AI benchmarks yet. And in addition, AI benchmarking faces great challenges. We conclude the five AI benchmark challenges as FIDSS, which are fragmented, isolated, dynamic, service-based, and stochastic. The first one is fragmented. There is a huge variety of application scenarios and model scenarios as shown in the pictures, and we can find that even for image classification, which is shown in the third picture, there are many models uh, with different parameter size, uh, different accuracies. And this picture shows the landscape of AI chips. Uh, we also find that there is a variety of chips, frameworks, compilers, and so on, uh, which raise great difficulties for benchmarking. The second challenge is isolated. Real-world datasets and workloads or even AI models are treated as first-class confidential issues and are hidden within data center giants. Uh, so uh, there is an isolation between the academia and in industry or even among different providers. So uh, it poses a huge obstacle for our communities towards developing an open and mature research field. The third one is dynamic. Mm, the AI algorithm, data sets, frameworks, chips are fast changing and evolving. So how to suit for the changes and keep updates are big problems. The next change is service-based architecture. Uh, internet service uh, almost uh, adopts microservice-based architectures, uh, which consist of diversity of various modules with very long and complex execution paths. It may involve um, multiple uh, tasks and uh, modules, or even subsystems. Uh, so the question is how to design a benchmark that can reflect the real-world application performance. The last one is the stochastic nature of AI. AI algorithms have huge parameters and uh, different settings may largely affect the performance. And moreover, the different runs for the same AI algorithm may vary largely, maybe due to the random states uh, or the other factors or the some characteristics of the uh, floating point operations. Uh, for example, uh, we conduct uh, uh, an experiment uh, we, uh, using different random states for image to test workloads, uh, one of the workloads in AI Bench, and we uh, evaluate the epochs to achieve the target quality, and we find that for different uh, runs, uh, the epochs uh, vary significantly. So above all, uh, the FIDSS challenges make it uh, extre extremely difficult to to build an AI benchmark. A traditional AI benchmarking methodologies almost adopt micro or component benchmarks, 
Mm, and we will see whether they are sufficient uh, for today's AI benchmarking. So let's first just say the micro benchmarks. Uh, for AI micro benchmarks, uh, like uh, the only convolution layer or the fully connected layer, mm, there is no accuracy information. However, accuracy is one of the most important metrics for AI workloads. Uh, so uh, flops is no longer the only metric. And we also conduct a series of experiments. Our experiments show that even mixed precision uh, training technology significantly improve the flops. However, it may deteriorate, deteriorate the model quality, as shown in the two figures. Uh, the first one is the flops improvements, and the second one is the quality decrease. So we conclude that only using micro benchmarks cannot find uh, these conclusions and may lead to error prone conclusions. Another bottleneck for microbenchmarks is that AI workloads uh, may have no single kernel. Through analyzing 17 workloads in AI Bench, uh, we find that there are many kernels. Uh, for example, uh, the face embedding workloads, they, are, uh, they occupy uh, almost the same percentage. So, only using one kernel is not enough for the workloads. And uh, there are many existing workloads adopt component benchmarks, uh, which provide a task level AI model implementation, like image classification. However, our experiments also show its potential misleading. For example, we first benchmark with a single component image to test. And we uh, adopt an, an optimization uh, technique, uh, which is model pruning. Through the optimization, the tail latency shortens by 51%, and uh, model accuracy decreases uh, 1%, which is acceptable uh, considering the huge uh, performance optimization mm, and uh, when we input, uh, when we put uh, these components into a real-world scenario, online translation intelligence, um, and we still use the same pruning technology, and we find that the tail latency has no improvements, while the accuracy decreases, which is unaccept unacceptable. So. Uh, they generate inconsistent conclusions, uh, and we conclude that only using components may lead to error-prone conclusions. And uh, someone may argue that uh, we can use the statistical model combining the component benchmarks to predict the overall system tail latency um, through profiling the component tail latency performance. And our answer is is no, uh, and we also conduct a serious uh, experiments. Uh, we use the two state-of-the-art statistical, statistical models, uh, including uh, a simple model, uh, a simple QNI model, and a sophisticated QNI network model. And uh, for these two uh, situations, uh, we find that uh, the statistical model cannot predict uh, the accuracy accurately. There may exist uh, three to line times performance gap. So in conclusion, scenario benchmarks is needed. A scenario benchmark is a proxy of a realistic application scenario and a permutation of a series of AI and non-AI components to capture the critical parts and primary modules. And our methodology is to build scenario benchmarks for evaluating the overall system performance. And in addition, we consider the conflicting benchmarking requirements. 
So for earlier stage evaluation, we provide microbenchmarks for portability and the simplicity. And for later stage evaluations, we provide components and scenario benchmarks for comprehensive list and uh, representative list. Uh, this figure shows the overall architecture of AI Bench. Uh, we provide uh, AI Bench scenario, uh, AI Bench training, AI Bench inference, and the micro benchmarks across four scenarios, including data center, high performance computing, edge, and uh, Internet of uh, Internet of Things. And next, I will introduce the related work. We classified the related work according to four domains, uh, including data center, high performance computing, edge, and uh, IoT. And for data center, um, many benchmarks have been proposed, like faster down bench, ML perf, and so on. And the biggest differences between AI bench and the related work is that AI bench uh, first uh, proposed uh, scenario. Uh, is the first uh, to propose the scenario benchmarks uh, and uh, considers different benchmarking requirements uh, like the uh, com comprehensiveness of workload characterization and uh, the affordability of the performance ranking and uh, different uh, stages for the earlier stage simulation and uh, later stage uh, comp com comprehensive evaluating. And for HPC, uh, the range of work is listed as the um, timeline. And uh, uh, we can see that there are many uh, range of work like uh, Deep 500. And uh, uh, the range of work uh, and also for edge, edge computing uh, and uh, IoT. And due to the time limitation, I do not introduce each one in detail. Uh, next, I will introduce AirBench in detail. Uh, AirBench is presented by uh, International Open Benchmark Council, uh, which is a non-profit international organization and uh, aims to promote the standardization, benchmarking, evaluation, and the emerging techniques. And we propose a scenario distilling AI benchmarking methodology. Uh, we first uh, formalize and uh, distill the real-world application scenarios uh, to a DAG-like permutation of essential AI and non-AI tasks. And then we define the uh, specification, including the scenario benchmark specification and the uh, component uh, specification uh, for the scenario, uh, we, uh, we define the permutations, and for the components, we define the AI tasks, models, and datasets, and metrics. And then uh, we implement, uh, implement the benchmarks. For the scalability and the simplicity, uh, we provide a reusing framework to support quickly construction of scenario benchmarks. Mm, and uh, through profiling, we identify micro benchmarks. And uh, the benchmarks can be deployed on physical machines and uh, simulators uh, for overall system evalu evaluation and component evaluation and uh, code design and optimization. Uh, based on the reusing framework, we provide two scenario benchmarks including the whole process of e-commerce search intelligence and online translation intelligence. Uh, both of them include the query generators, online service, uh, offline training, and uh, data input uh, modules. And uh, this picture shows the online translation intelligence imp implementation. And uh, we prov uh, we, uh, the query generators uh, can generate the image queries, test queries, audio queries, and the whole process of the online translation scenario. 
and Edge AI Bench provides the Edge Scenario benchmarks. Uh, it uh, mainly includes four typical Edge AI scenarios, uh, including autonomous uh, vehicle, uh, ICU patient monitor, surveillance uh, camera, and uh, smart home. Uh, these four uh, scenarios have different characteristics. Uh, for example, for autonomous uh, vehicle, uh, it, it is very latency sensitive and uh, has a high, requir um, high requirements of the accuracy, high accuracy requirements. And uh, in total, we provide nine typical edge AI tasks, uh, like the lane detection, heart failure prediction, death prediction, and so on. And we provide the corresponding models, data sets, and uh, implementations. And uh, AI bench training uh, is identified from 17 industry partners. And uh, we, uh, we identified the core scenarios of our 17 industry partners and uh, uh, and they are involved uh, AI tasks. And this table needs to uh, needs to their core scenarios and uh, the AI tasks for each core scenario. Uh, we identify the search engine, social network, and uh, e-commerce domains. And uh, through statistics, uh, we identified the seventeen AI tasks. Uh, covering diverse network architectures um, and uh, covering text, uh, image, audio, video, and uh, three-dimensional data processing. And comparing to its concurrent work MLProf, AIBench training has wider coverage uh, from the perspectives of tasks, um, model complexity, and uh, workload uh, workload characteristics, including the microarchitecture level, system level, and the algorithm level. Mm. And for example, uh, we list the performance range of these two benchmarks in the table, and we can find uh, the range of each matrix. And AI bench has a wider uh, range. And uh, next, uh, I will introduce the HPC AI 500, uh, which targets at the uh, high performance computing system evaluation. We concern three criteria for high performance computing evaluation, uh, including the repeatability, uh, representativeness, and uh, affordability, and uh, the scalability. For repeatability, uh, we analyzed the uh, run-to-run variation of uh, 17 workloads in AI Bench, and uh, we find that uh, some workloads have high randomness, uh, like image compression, which achieves which which reached were reached to to 22 percentage, and uh, some workloads have no variation, uh, like uh, object detection. Uh, so different workloads has different run-to-run uh, -run variance, uh, which is the uh, matrix uh, to guide how we uh, select uh, workloads for uh, high-performance computing evaluation workloads. And we also use k-means to cluster these workloads according to their characteristics uh, to achieve the representativeness. Mm including the system level and the microarchitecture level metrics. Combining the run-to-run uh, -run variation, uh, which is missed in the last slides, um, and uh, the representative according, uh, representative list according to the cluster uh, results, um, and uh, uh, the affordability, uh, we choose three workloads. Uh, for high performance computing evaluation, uh, they are image classification, object detection, and learning to rank. And uh, for scalability, 
we uh, also evaluate uh, these three workloads. Uh, we find that uh, image classification and uh, object detection meet the scalability requirements. Uh, so, above all, uh, the HPC AI500 uh, includes two workloads from AIBench. Uh, they are extreme weather analysis, uh, which takes the uh, extreme weather as input and uh, the image classification. And uh, the datasets and models they used are nested in below. Uh, nested below. For fairness of performance ranking, we define layered benchmarking rules. It consists of hardware level, system level, and uh, free level. Each level has different uh, restrictions about hardware and the uh, software settings, the parameter settings, and uh, the communication technologies. Mm. So for different uh, uh, ranking, uh, they can use the different uh, level and uh, mm, following the different uh, restrictions. We also propose a new metric, uh, VFLOPS, to unify the computation and the model quality uh, so that we can combine and consider the computation performance and whether the convergence quality is close to the target quality. And the, the formula is nested as the in the slides. Uh, we also perform performance ranking using HPC AI 500. Mm, due to the time limitation, the more details about the rules, metrics, and uh, the other performance data are available from the link listed uh, on our slides. At last, I will introduce the AI Bench Inference and uh, AI, AIoT Bench. AI Bench Inference provides the same 17 workloads with the AI Bench training. Mm including the test image, audio, video, three-dimensional data processing. And uh, AIoT Bench targets automobile and IoT device evaluating. Uh, we provide heavyweights and uh, network models and use three AI frameworks. And in total, we provide uh, six image classification models. And uh, the Frameworks uh, including the TensorFlow Lite, PyTorch Mobile, and Cafe 2. So, in, in conclusion, we think scenario AI benchmarking is needed, and uh, we provide uh, AI bench scenario, AI bench training, AI bench inference, and uh, micro benchmarks across data center, high performance computing, edge, and uh, Internet of Things. Also, we consider the different uh, benchmarking requirements at uh, different uh, stages. The references are shown uh, in this slides. Uh, if you feel interested, please have access to these technical reports. Mm. And uh, we list uh, all the related technical reports of AIBench HPC AI 500 at AI bench and uh, AIoT bench. Also, the download link is also listed. Um, this slide lists the uh, download link of AI bench, including the micro benchmark, component benchmark, scenario benchmark, and also the AI bench framework. Um, please note that uh, uh, the user needs to sign in or sign up the bench hub to get access to. Um, packages. And uh, this slide shows the download link uh, for HPC AI 500, Edge AI Bench, AIoT Bench, and also uh, you need to sign in or sign up. Mm, thank you for your listening. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can send me your email. Thank you again.